Welcome to Overcomer Covenant Church. We are so glad you're part of our church family. We encourage you to tune in to any of our midweek or weekend services. We hope you enjoy this message. J-A-H, Jah is a name for God. Praise Jah. Hallelujah. Praise Jah. Hail to Jah. Praise to God. Um, we are at the end of our current 21-day fast, fasting and prayer time. And so those of you that have participated in that, and as you come to an end, this, this is um, a great time for you. If you started last or 23 weeks ago on a Sunday, started that, that, that whole day was a fast day, then the fast uh, essentially ended for use last night at midnight, and so this is for you, the fast has, has uh, come to an end. If you started it three weeks ago on a Monday or, or Sunday night, Monday morning, the fast officially ends tonight for you. So, um, you know, it's not kind of a regimented thing, so um, the fast is, bottom line, is coming to an end. So if you've been fasting food, um, you, you sh- should not go to the steakhouse today. <laughs> <laughs> because if you do, and you have not eaten uh, that type of food for three weeks, it, it, it will do bring pain, I promise you. You'll, it'll taste good going down. It's, it's your body, your, your system hasn't uh, been digesting food of that magnitude for, th- for almost a month. And it's really kind of shut itself down. One of the things you're going to find, though, that's really a, a phenomena of God's woven power in humanity is that when you fast and you go to liquids and you're doing water or teas or whatever, and your, your digestive system virtually comes to a, a, a halt where it's not processing food, the energy that it takes that the digestive system uses 40 to 50 to 60 percent of the energy goes to process food depending on how often you're eating. That energy goes now to your immune system to heal disease. So when you, that's why when you can come out of a, an extended fast, you feel so much better. The toxins have, have been kind of removed from your system and your, your body has had the time to heal itself. That's why fasting is, is an important component in healing cancer. Because your body has the ability to regenerate and restore and heal itself. But sometimes the disease, the disease, the disease is so strong, it overwhelms the immune system. But really, it's designed to be the opposite that the immune system is so strong, it overwhelms disease. So fasting helps the immune system get greater fuel because the digestive system is not using it. So you gotta, you got to phase that back in to, um, to full ramp up. It takes time. Now, I mean, I'm talking about a few hours. Then you have the steak. It's, it's going to take fruit and small portions of food, not the American portions. You have to go to the Chinese portions, right? <laughs> get over to Southeast Asia, Jack, and get that little bowl like this. That portions. We, we're Americans. This is our portion. And, and, if, and if you're uh, at one of these other restaurants like Sunbreak over here, this is that portion. So we have these two. We, we fixed it by having to-go boxes. So you go order this gigantor meal and appetizers with some dessert and have a to-go, to-go box. So you can eat that later at the house or give it to the dog. I mean, it's just take small portions. If you're fasting something other than food, uh, let's say you're fasting, you we're fasting in media, not doing any media and putting that to the side. Um, here's a Slowly usher that back in. 
Don't overwhelm your soul back with the, with the stuff that you haven't been cognizant of for the last three weeks. Are you serious? It's like, it's like um, soap operas. Remember soap operas? They still have them? They still do? My golly. And the days of our lives, General Hospital, all it's just drama. If, if you are ready for that flood of drama to come back into your life about somebody in North Dakota whose dog was lost and the police didn't even find the dog and they found the dog trembling in a bush and you're overwhelmed by that. You don't even know whose dog that is. Let it go. You only have so much emotional stuff that you're designed to process. Don't feel yet a processing with a whole bunch of other junk that you shouldn't be processing. So that when you have to process the measure that God has given to you, you're strong enough to handle it. So let that slowly get back in. And if there's some things that you've cut out of your life that need to be cut out, keep them out. You've already overcome that. If you're like a sugarholic um, and now you've broken that because you didn't do sugar for, for, for three weeks. But, and you've done some natural sugars. Let, enjoy that. Don't, don't go back to the chocolate donut binge or the Starbucks binge. I'm not saying you don't ever eat a chocolate donut again. But just kind of measure it properly, okay? And uh, you'll find some, some sustainable victory. The, today's uh, journal talked about the impossible is possible. And I want to explore that um, for us in a short period of time that we have remaining. Mark chapter 5 tells us a story. Jesus is, is in the journey. And life is a journey. And you have a journey. Our journeys are different. Right now, as part of the journey, we've all been gathered here. But we go different places, different environments, and we gather here again. So life's a journey. And so Jesus is going through the journey. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, Mark 5, 21, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. So the Sea of Galilee, and on one side of the Sea of Galilee was kind of the Jewish side of the, that, that population. On the other side, there was kind of Samaritans and those who didn't walk um, in congruency with the Jews. So, so the Sea of Galilee kind of separated. But you had free reign in both uh, Arenas. Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. They were everywhere. Along the journey, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent, it's experimental. They're trying stuff to see if, if they can help her. Um, she had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. I mean, it's just, it, nothing, a lot of things haven't changed. I mean, it's still practice. What physicians do is practice. They call it a practice. It's a good practice now. Modern medicine is wonderful. But it's still a practice. They're going to try this for, th for five days, ten. If it doesn't work, come back, right? And we'll try something else because we think it's this range of diseases. This, this is, I, I went to medical school. It's probably something in this range. They're not just guessing happers throwing darts. Oh, yeah. They're, they're giving you a, a, a medical opinion, but it's a practice. It, it wasn't very good back then. So they're practicing, and this woman is still paying her copay. Her money's now gone, but she hasn't gotten any better. I'm just saying, when you're, when you're in a position like that, believe me, there's a lot of self-talk going on inside your head. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, you're saying, I'm going to die. I don't know. What's going on here? This is 12 years. I'm not talking about, and for three days. This is 12 years. 12 years, this flow of blood. She's not getting better. All her money is gone. She's now in a, in a poverty state. And here's her self-talk. Verse 28. For she said, 
If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. May God give you that kind of self-talk. I just guess all I got to do is touch his clothes. I don't know who told her that. Certainly not described in the scriptures. If you touch the, the, the garments of Jesus, if you just touch his garment, she, you shall be made well. So she does. She comes and touches Jesus' garment because her self-talk says, if I just touch his garment. Can I just say, you, you can't, your faith can never go beyond God's ability. Well, I've just got this crazy faith, and it's good because it's, it's, not even, it's not even close to what God's ability is. God's ability is greater than, than your ability to, to, to trust him. I'm just going to go for this and hunt with God. Good. He's in it. It says, immediately the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Verse 30, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, Jesus, are you tripping? The multitude is thronging you and you say, who touched me? Are you, eh, come on. And he looked around to see who had done this thing. Because there's a look on your face when God has done a miracle. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. Can, can I say this to you? In this journey, you this walk you're on, you need to learn how to expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Twelve years. Jesus is not going to heal her. He's going to Jairus' house to, to touch his daughter. But this woman along the journey, self-talk, if I just touched his garments, her faith cannot outstretch his ability. He doesn't even know she's touching him for that purpose. But he's still the healer. He is who he is. And so are you. Children of God. Sons and daughters of the most high God. Where the spirit of the living God dwells in us. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead, why trouble the teacher any further? Along the journey, there's news that comes in that may in itself alter your course, if you let it. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tolmet and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Jesus was not confused that the child was dead. He was trying to still cloak himself. It is so different than how we act today. Today we're posting on Facebook, tweeting, Sending out emails about how wonderful I am and how glorious. And I want you to show this. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, run you this clip like 45 gazillion times until I got hits all over the world. So everyone would recognize the great power. 
in which I walk in. That is so ridiculous. And I'm not on anybody who does that. May God deal with you yourself. Because I'm his servant too. And so are you. But that's not his way and that's not our way. Because we're not interested in fame and glory. We're interested in honoring the King of kings and Lord of lords. And all that will take its natural course. So he puts them out so they can't see what's going to happen. And he says, she sleep. Then he took the child by the hand, verse 41. He goes into the room, takes the child, and says to her, Talita kumi, which is translated, girl, get up. <laughs> Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, a 12-year-old. And they were overcome with great amazement. Expect the unexpected. Everything is possible. God can do anything at any time for anybody. Don't inspect, expect. You can lose your way if, you, if you're doing too much inspection. Well, how is that going to work? I don't understand that. I don't need a plan. I don't think that's going to I don't know if we can do that. God's not interested in your process. He's interested in doing something so supernatural, it jacks you up too. My daughter is alive. Hey, don't even bother him any longer. She's already dead. Just let him go on and do whatever he has to do. And Jesus steps in and says, oh, nothing. Mm. You got to believe, man. On this journey that God has, as you're rolling into Costco, you got to believe. Expect God to do the unexpected, what only he can do. Look at Mark chapter 6. This is, things are happening. I mean, it's unbelievable. The reason I, I, I sold this in there, because I want to I, I wanna talk to you for a little something, just a little half a second about, about kind of, a, 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 kind of a, a normal lifestyle in the earth but it really as is abnormal for those of us who are spiritual and walk with God. It's kind of normal. When you read it, as I read it, you know, when, when I read it, sometimes you have to, you have to not read things with, a, with a, a slant. And you have to read what actually happened and put it in its in this proper context. So here's Mark chapter 6. It says, then he went out from there and came to his own country. His own country is where he grew up, where he was born, where he was raised. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, in his own town, in his own city, in his own environment. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And that wisdom is this which is given to him. And what wisdom is this which is given to him? That such mighty works are performed by his hands. So they have heard the stories of things that Jesus is doing because he's doing them everywhere. And crowds, multitudes are everywhere tracking after Jesus. Is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary? This is just a carpenter. His father Joseph was a carpenter and Jesus took up that trade and he became a carpenter. But you don't really see him as a carpenter. You see him as Lord and Savior, as King, but not them. Is this not the carpenter? You're not a carpenter. You're going to preach in the synagogue, you carpenter? Oh, come on. Is this the the son of Mary, the the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? They say they were offended. They're offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Do you think it's different for you? See, listen, a prophet is is not without honor except 
in his own country, people that know him, relatives in his, in his house. And listen, if you're waiting to step into what God has for you to get honor from your own country, your relatives, you're going to be waiting. I just want to make sure this is done. No. Here's what Jesus says. Now, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. He's still going to teach. But he couldn't do the miracles that he wanted to do because they didn't believe he could do them. You know how they manifested that they couldn't believe it? Because they didn't bring anybody for him to heal them. They didn't bring any friends or family. Why am I going to bring some friends and drag them here and get them here to to put them in front of the carpenter? It's not because, well, because you don't believe I have power, I can't do anything. That That doesn't constrict Jesus. That didn't constrict him at all. What constricts him is the fact that you don't even come to him. You don't even come to him with your issue. You never even speak the word of God as though you believe it. You don't even open your mouth and declare with faith. Listen, you'd be better off declaring it with no faith, but just declare it and watch what God does. But they, nah, I'm, not, I'm not packing up my family and going across town to sit in a room with a carpenter. But a few sick folk came, so he healed them. I'm, I'm saying this to you, and I want you to hear what the Spirit is saying. This is your hour. The reason you're on this planet and gathered in this environment, because the Spirit of the living God that is on the earth, lives in you. What do you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe when you pray, he hears your prayers and grants your petitions? That he heals the sick? That he's going to drive disease out of your friend's body? That he's going to transform your life and make your name great in the kingdom? Well, we're going to see what you believe by looking at you. Because you have to live congruently, and you will live congruently to what you believe. So if you're going to live in bitterness and angry and anger and frustration, you're living that. But if we'll just believe in Jesus and act congruently, everything God has determined to give us, he'll give us. Because he can do anything at any time for anybody. You ought to, you ought to get that phrase. In your self-talk, God could do anything at any time for anybody. What will he do for me in this situation? I, I'm just going to encourage you to go for it because that's the way God's, God is. Turn with, turn with me to John chapter 9. Let's read, a, let's read a couple more situations before we close. John 9, 1. Now, Jesus, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Blind from birth is blind for life. Can you agree with that? It's not like if you're blind from birth, it's one of those things you can grow out of. Somebody was telling me a story about a little kid. I don't know who it was. It was in their delivery. Uh, the doctor was a little too aggressive and ended up br- breaking their arm. It actually, it was your, your son. It was your son. And the son, their son, who is how old is he now? He's nine years old, broke his arm at birth. So in, in, in the delivery process. But because he was a baby, the arm just heals. Just heals back. It comes back. It's just like, oh, yes, and we had to go through this a lot. Eh, it's, he's a baby. He's just going to grow through it. Why? Because babies are resilient. Kids are just tough as could be. You could drop a kid and he'll get up. I mean, <laughs> kids are tough. Man. Don't practice that with your own kids, but... 
But if you're born blind, it's, like, it's kind of like no remedy for that. It's not like you'll grow out of it. Not, not with born blind. Blind from birth is blind for life. But Jesus. But that carpenter. And his disciples ask him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned that this man, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus' response is, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Salom, which is translated since. So he went and washed, came back seeing. See, the, the, the question is not whether Jesus could spit, make mud, and put the guy's eyes and the guys could go back to seeing. It's just, it's just, it's just time of point. I mean, the guy wasn't deaf, so he could hear. Dude, I'm, I'm going to make a little mud, put this in your eyes. Is that good with you? Man. He didn't even go there. He just put the. I'm, you good with this? There's going to be some times, man, you're going to have to step out of a comfort zone that you're in and do some things that are not comfortable for you by God's command and just trust him. Man, if I spit and make mud, man, this is going to be rubber. Don't worry about that. God's going to work this thing for good. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him at your house and your family and with your coworkers because God is faithful. Nothing is impossible. Trust God and obey him. John chapter 11, verse 39, Jesus is there to heal Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus has got sick. In his sickness, the sickness progressed to death. Then they uh, finally buried him. And by the time Jesus shows up, he's already been in the grave for four days. And he greets Mary and Martha, and Martha says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I believe that, that God will do whatever you ask. And so Jesus says, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him who was dead, Lazarus, said to, to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Has God ever done something that's kind of disappointed you or, or not done something, and you said, listen, I, this is a, I've been praying about this, interceding for this, asking God for it, and nothing. He ain't done anything. He ain't done anything. I am kind of frustrated with you, God. Anybody but besides me ever? You know? I, I'm just telling you, God has a timing for the things he's trying to get done, and you're in, you're in it. But if you have to, and it's hard to do, you have to kind of not attach your, your process to God's promise. And, and Martha had just had a touch, get here, Jesus, hurry. And he's delaying. Come on, Jesus, come on, he's getting sicker. He's delaying. Jesus, he's dead, but if you get here right now, I think something miraculous could happen. He's delaying. Jesus, we haven't even had the funeral. His body's still with us. Come on, Jesus. He's delaying. And by the time the guy's dead, buried, four days later, here comes Jesus. Oh, you are so late. You are so Anybody? Nothing stops him. Nothing stops him. Nothing. Nothing. Jesus says to Martha, did I not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. If, if, if God always hears Jesus, he always hears us because we are in Jesus. And Jesus.
My battery goes dead. Thank you. There it goes. But because of the people who were standing by, he said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come here. And he who, was, who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave claws. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to him, let him go. Loose him and let him go. I'm going to encourage you to do this one thing. Remove the limits from your thinking. No limits. No limits. No limits. Come on, you got to rehearse. That's your self-talk. It's got to be your self-talk. If I just touched the hem of his garment, that was her self-talk. What's yours? I'm not going to make it. It's just too tough. I just don't like it. It's too cold here. It rains all the time. I don't pick my feet. My feet hurt. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No limits. Get out of that. Got to break that. Can't go there. Come on. You're here to lead. We're here to do a work in the kingdom of God. Come on. I got this issue and I got this little struggle. Yeah, I understand that. No limits. He does not care about that. No limits. Come on, girl. Didn't I tell you, if you want to see the glory of God, you got to get that stone rolled back. I'm just saying, remove the limits from your thinking. You need to be saying sometimes to the king, where are my limits that I've gotten comfortable with? I'm going to give you a hint. Start with your fears. Start with your fears. Because your fears limit you. What are they going to say about me? What if I do this? What if I go in and this doesn't happen? What if I pray for this guy and he never gets healed? What if I stand up strong, bold in the name of Jesus? And I never, 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 never. That's your limit. It's not God's. It's your limit. It's our limit. God asked me to do something years ago, and I was like, God, I am not doing that. Because if I do that and it doesn't happen, then they're, they're going to stop believing that you're the great God. So I just better be, I can't do that. He said, the Lord said to me, you're not worried about me. You're worried about you. And I was. I didn't realize it. And I said, all in then. Anything you ask me to do, I'm doing all of it, 100%. Crazy. All in. Okay, you, you got to get some, some measure for where you are. For your all in might be different than my all in. But you at some point in time, you got to at least push it to no limit. Man. I'm going to close with one more. I didn't even know I'd add this, but this is a great, it's a great passage. It really speaks to the nature of God. It's found in Luke chapter 7, verse 11. It says, now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. Here's a funeral at the gate. And this woman has already lost her husband, who is their provider. And now she loses her adult son. So she's by herself with nothing. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin. And those who carried him stood still, and he said, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then all came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. 
It's compassion that ushers in miracles. Jesus sees this woman and her condition, and he just decides that he's going to stop the funeral and raise him from the dead. Can I say just, just there's something that's in you that God has placed in you, in your journeys, that he's going to make a demand on that compassion? And when you feel it, act on it. That's the only question that still is to be resolved. What are you going to do about it? It might be at Costco. You're rolling through Costco, getting some chicken because the fast is over. You're walking past the cinnamon pretzels. And there's a guy there. who's struggling, and they look at you. Hmm. You can go and play safe. I didn't really see him. He didn't see me. There was nothing there. I just, I'm just making this up. I just, I didn't, I just, I'm not supposed to pray for him. I'm not, I just, I'm, I got to get out of here. Well, you can do that, like you always do. I'd, I'd rather be the nut and case guy that's praying for everybody. I've, I've met those. I don't want to be that guy, but I'd rather be that guy than be the guy that prays for nobody. Than to be the guy that never believes that God could do something extraordinary through my life because I constantly disqualify myself because my thinking doesn't think no limits. I, I don't want to be that guy. I just want to be the guy that goes, yeah, let's do this. You don't even know what you're doing. I know. But he does. And he's in me. I'm just saying. Father, in the name of Jesus, no limits. No more limits. Help us. We finished 21 days of devotion to you, God. Help us. Release your anointing in this house and in your sons and daughters. Transformation in our lives like never before. We trust you to do supernatural things in those that we love. On our friends, in our household. We trust you to do incredible things for those in our community. And we choose, according to your own way and your own word, to impact their lives for good. Empower us. Speak your word with faith. You know what the word of faith is? It's you speaking it. But what if I don't have faith? You speaking it is faith. I'm just going to, well, I'm not, I, got, I got God to kind of make sure I'm sure in this. Speak it. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Hear the word of God. Speak it, man. Open up your mouth and speak it. But what, but what if, ah, shush, with the thinking that's counter to God's ability and speak it. Command the word that God has given you, that he's put inside your heart. Speak it. The name of Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. I'm trusting God for, and I speak into. Come on, speak it. Speak it. Speak the word. The spirit of God is in you. Speak it. When you're not sure what to do, withdraw for times of prayer and fasting to get strength and wisdom and insight then you, God will give you instruction and step out into your place and speak it. And let compassion overflow in your, in your heart because miracles follow compassion because it's not about you. It's about those who you serve and love. 
He is the great God. He can't be stopped. Father, I thank you that you have chosen us on purpose. And we embrace it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to start a, a special needs program soon for children, for kids. Kids who don't have, their parents who don't have an environment for them because they have, they have unique issues or challenges. We're going to start a program in this house for them. Now, here's, here's what's happened. I've, been, I've met on this a couple times, pray, but I'm declaring it right now. It ha- we don't have a special needs program. What we do now, when did it start it? About eight seconds ago when I declared it. And it's just a matter of time. Matter of time. You're going you're gonna to shift your household, your family, your city. You ready, Steve? Because God has determined it from the beginning of time, and he's setting it in motion. Now, do I think I'll have no resistance? Of course not. There's going to be resistance. from, But the resistance doesn't come from the king. It comes from the king's enemies. But the king's enemies are completely defeated. And we always overcome. Father, we thank you for the victory you have given us. It is sealed and settled in the name of Yeshua. And we rejoice in it in Jesus' name. And as we earlier today have released those by, through forgiveness, we ask that you empower us by your spirit with the anointing of the Holy One. So that the anointing of the Holy One lives in us as holy ones. Thank you, Jesus. So that we activate the dreams and hopes that God has established. In Jesus' name, somebody said amen. Amen. Amen just means so be it. Amen. So act congruently. Act congruently. What am I, else, what am I supposed to be doing now? Offering. Okay. Okay. You know, because at the first service, I didn't, I forgot to greet those who were members, who had come to the membership class in the first service. And then somebody told me in the, in the who was a first-time guest and came to the, to the membership yesterday, said, hey, well, you're supposed to greet the members. It was first. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> so I had them hang to, to the second service. So we want to bless the Lord with the first fruits, the tithes, the offerings that are that belong to him. It's honorable to do that. We honor the king. There's lots of ways to give. So our ushers are going to come in just a second pass uh, some of our buckets. And you have an opportunity to write a check or, or give an offering envelope. But also through push pay is really a very fast and convenient way. If you haven't signed up for that yet, it's a great way to do that. Um, if you uh, have your, what is it, Kyle? The uh, contribution statement is going to come in the mail uh, to you. Make sure we have a good address for you so it will come to the correct place. If not, you can go online to info at overcomercc.org and give us your address, and we'll make sure we sent that, get that redirected to you. Somebody came in today, one of our uh, security guys, uh, handed me uh, my uh, contribution statement, had come in. It was a kind of address to the church, uh, and it was from the church, 33415, Military Road, South, the right address, the right deal, but they ended up going to one of our neighbors. In the community, and the neighbor looked at it, brought it over here, gave it to the first person that he saw. Here you go. And he brought it to me. So thankful. So I, I don't even know why, why, what happened because he had the right address from the right address. You know, um, but, it, but it, did, it ultimately made it to me. So the journey continues. So may yours have 
direct access through the postal service to get straight to you. But if you don't get it, uh, let us know, and we'll make sure that that takes that happens for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the tithes, the offerings, steps of faith, global missions, all the things we do around the world that your people do. We thank you for allowing us to participate in that process and giving us resource. The first tenth is yours, and so we give you the tithe and the offering. And we establish it according to your way because we are faithful to you. We love you with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. Bless us as only you can with raises, promotions, uh, checks in the mail, valuable gifts of all kinds. Let this be an explosive time of blessing upon the children of God. I, I release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this message. If God is impacting your life through Overcomer Covenant Church, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by visiting overcomercc.org forward slash give or by downloading the Overcomer app and selecting give. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more messages like this one.